ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Jelly. Uh, first, I have to thank uh, Blake Hilton that he invited me to come here and to give a, a lecture. Well, it's more a report than a lecture uh, on uh, sustainable and biodegradable polymers and plastics in the past European R&D programs. And uh, when I took over that task, I thought, well, an easy thing, uh, easy to make. And then uh, at a certain time, I had a feeling I should not have said yes to Andre, uh, because it turned out that searching uh, the internet, especially the coffee server <coughs> for such projects, is a very hard task. <coughs> well, uh, as you can see here, uh, it's very complex. Uh, I used about 50 keywords to find uh, the information, and uh, you have to go through, uh, through the whole procedure with every keyword. You can use three or four or five of them in combination. If you do so, you get a lot of information. You get, at a certain moment, uh, 50 <coughs> other projects, and uh, no differentiation in between anything. So, makes no sense. Well, um, this, Still one thing I cannot promise to you. Uh, I cannot tell you. Ah, yeah, okay. Um, I cannot really tell you if all the projects uh, that uh, have been funded by EU are really uh, within uh, my lecture here. Uh, because uh, especially with the older ones, uh, it is quite difficult. Uh, I hope it's better here. <clears throat> it's quite difficult because uh, um, not all the information is still available. Even if you go to the archives, it's not available. It's a pity because it's a loss of a lot of information in Brussels. It's a sink of knowledge, in my opinion. It is a, a pity what happens there. Well, uh, the information that you have in the recorded system is not complete. Sometimes you find information about the objectives. Sometimes you even don't find any information about the objectives uh, of these projects. For the older projects, very, very often you cannot tell anything about how much money flew inside. So it's very hard then uh, if you want uh, to give uh, information about do we have more money in that field now available or was it, was it more in the past? If you don't know the number of, uh, of uh, people, of groups that were working in a certain project, it's impossible uh, to say if per uh, partner there was enough money or there was more or less <coughs> money than today. So this is strictly uh, not, sorry for that, uh, it is uh, not possible. <coughs> well, uh, If you look at the information on the projects themselves, also this is very weak. Uh, it depends on the texts that are delivered <coughs> by the coordinators. And obviously, and this, sorry, I don't know where I should go, but there's always a... Maybe, maybe those microphones. This small Personal should are. just uh, put down the, the volume that it's at all. No, no, it's for recording. No, we need, we need a microphone to record. Well, the problem is that obviously the texts that come from the coordinators are not controlled in Brussels. So sometimes you get two pages of information on nothing uh, in one project and you get no information at all in other projects. That was what I fo uh, was focusing during uh, this task. Well, uh, the search program itself also is faulty. Uh, I will show you an example. Uh, also, this made my, my job not uh, just easy. For example, you can see that here I asked uh, for certain keywords, um, and you can see 181 projects were found. I thought, fine. So you click through, and uh, you have to. Uh, the, the project inside here, sorry. I can, I can scroll, I can scroll. Yeah. So. Can you go up again? Okay. Stop? No, 
Sorry for that inconvenience. <clears throat> um, as I can see, there's uh, some information uh, is just not showing up here. Right? I don't know what happened here. Yeah. Sorry for that inconvenience, but sometimes uh, things happen that never happen normally. And uh, obviously, this day is something like that. Well, what I have done in this project, I was looking for all the projects in the field of starch based uh, plastics, of uh, polyhydroxy alkane weight uh, uh, projects, and projects on PLA. Um, going through uh, here, you see the projects on, on starch. Uh, 20 projects have been uh, funded uh, during the program FP2 to FP7. And uh, there's quite some interesting uh, projects inside. Sometimes there's a lot of information that you can find. And I think all of you, you will have this project list on your sticks. So you can uh, have a look through uh, as well uh, when you're at home. Um, Part of these projects, if you can go on a little bit, uh, uh, has been funded in quite a good way. Here you see a project uh, in NMP in FP7 uh, on packaging materials funded with 3.3 uh, 3 million uh, dollars, uh, uh, euros. You see uh, it just ended. Um, here uh, it is uh, quite a modern approach, uh, also using nanoparticles. Uh, to optimize the di desired properties uh, of the plastics. Uh, can you go on a little bit more? Uh, uh, most of the projects that you find uh, are on packaging materials. Uh, quite interesting in the field of starch, uh, I didn't find any uh, uh, projects, even at the beginning, how to produce this type of extruded starch. Uh, obviously, the funding in, uh, by EU came in later, uh, when people uh, try to make uh, um, uh, material uh, uh, with certain properties uh, for packaging. Okay, uh, partially you have a lot of money going inside, partially it is uh, uh, projects that are below 100,000 uh, euros as this one uh, that you can see here. Can you just go click through and I would say stop. Well, this is one uh, project uh, that 
uh, wedding coordinator uh, is uh, from Italy, uh, a company named Novamont, I think all of you know them. Uh, uh, this is uh, funded in a moment with 3.5 million, and you see this is an ongoing project. Um, composite material you can also find uh, sometimes uh, for the packaging and construction sector. Please just go click through. You see a lot of money going in right here. It was six and a half million euro. Uh, 1.5 million euro here for a uh, pea starch film, uh, which uh, would trigger biodegradation uh, properties. Then you have a European uh, polysaccharide network that is working in that field that is also of interest. And, uh, well, now I think let's uh, just quickly go through. Uh, you have the information and, and you can read it uh, from your sticks that you got uh, clearly. So uh, I don't need to say too much. Uh, I go on or that? No, go on, go forward. Still forward. Let's go to the end of, uh, this is uh, project 20, I think, yeah. Here you have a list of all the projects uh, that have been funded by EU. So you see that in FP3 for starch-based plastics, uh, the whole thing started, uh, but the information there is totally incomplete. I only know that there were three projects, two on air, one on craft. Uh, no uh, information about the objectives, no information about the, the money that flew inside. Later on in uh, FP5, you see uh, the information is better. Uh, we, uh, in FP5, uh, we had uh, five projects. Uh, in total, it was uh, three million euro that uh, run inside. Uh, and then you see that uh, in FP6 and even FP7, you have a really high increase of money flowing to this part, uh, type of plastics. In total, here in these uh, two framework programs, you have about 26 uh, million uh, euro uh, that go inside. The total funding uh, since FP5, you see, it was about 30 million euro. Let's go on, please. I'm sorry that I did not prepare uh, uh, some, some other type of preparation like PowerPoint, but with this information, it's impossible to make it. I tried, it's uh, really not possible. Well, um, EU funded projects on PHA, uh, we had 20 on starch, it's 21 on PHA, so it's a similar uh, uh, thing. Um, you see uh, that uh, here uh, in, in the FP7 there is quite a lot of uh, uh, people programs, this is just for person, uh, personal work for, for a certain period of time. Uh, very often one or two years in, uh, with 80 to, 100, uh, to about 200,000 euro. Um, uh, here you have uh, copolyesters involved. Uh, just go through a little bit. I would say stop uh, when we have... No, other direction, please. This is also packaging uh, materials with using nanocomposites. Just go on, please. Uh, a lot of money flowing in here. Uh, uh, this is uh, 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 conversion of carbon containing waste uh, into, uh, into um, uh, biopolymers. This is uh, Anipol. I, was, uh, I should have been the, the coordinator of Anipol, but I um, went uh, into my pension in the meantime, so uh, Martin uh, Koller took over this. And you see a project on hydroxy, uh, polyhydroxy alkaline rates from olive oil uh, waste. Uh, so very often in this field in the last years you see waste materials that are used for PHA production. And uh, what has to be said here, if you, you can always read second generation uh, of PHAs that come up now. Well, the idea is very old. We are working uh, in the same field uh, since 15 years. And uh, the only chance to use these materials if you start from very, very cheap raw materials. Uh, also here, there's a lot of projects uh, on composite uh, materials, um, uh, like it was with the starch. If you see, it's uh, quite uh, a lot of money uh, also running inside. 
This uh, here is uh, a project uh, with the acronym WAPOL. I was the coordinator of this. And also, uh, I have to say, if you look uh, into the server in Brussels, the information is very poor. Uh, I will show you a little bit more of information at the end of this, just to show you what, how I think it should be done. Uh, but uh, it's a pity uh, what you can get in information when you search for this. OK, uh, let's just go to the end of uh, the PHAs. Uh, you can have a look through these projects, uh, of course, uh, on your own. Uh, still more, it's uh, 21. Uh, well, this is the overview. You see, it started very early. Uh, in FP2, in the, in the Eclair and uh, Bright Urim. Uh, but there's no information, not even about the, the clearer objectives of these projects. Uh, then we, in Air and Bright Urim, uh, there were about uh, 3 million euros going inside. Uh, FP4, the information is totally incomplete, so partially no uh, information about the money flow inside, partially not even the objective uh, mentioned. But also here you can see in FP6 and FP7, suddenly there's a lot of money flowing inside, uh, 16 millions uh, in FP6, uh, 13 millions in FP7. So uh, it's about 85% uh, of the money, uh, of the uh, FP6 money that still runs into that project. So I cannot see that money flow to PHA project is decreasing. Uh, in total, you see it's uh, 31 uh, million euro uh, that were used for uh, funding PHA pro uh, projects. The last point then is uh, the, uh, the field of, uh, uh, of PLA. Um, and uh, here we, we also have about uh, 20, I think it's 25 projects that you have inside. Um, just uh, to make things uh, short, I think you can click through. Uh, and go to the uh, to the end where I have the uh, the data about what happened. Yeah, that's it here. Uh, you see, uh, this also started in FP3 with uh, six million euros. So at the beginning, there was a lot of money that uh, flow into this direction. Uh, at the same time, for starch and for uh, PHAs, there was nearby no money flow. Uh, in FP4, uh, the information is incomplete. Uh, FP6, you see a lot of money. It's uh, nearby 18 million euro that went inside. But in FP7, suddenly, you have a, discre a decrease to 9 million. That means uh, for this field, uh, it's only, uh, well, 55% uh, of the money uh, of uh, FP6 uh, six that is still available uh, for FP7. So there is a, a real drop. I don't know why, uh, but uh, uh, this is uh, what the data from Brussels say. Okay, I have my conclusions uh, to uh, all these things uh, uh, just in the following part here. Uh, as I told you at the beginning, uh, the complicated thing is that the information is not uh, complete. Uh, only in FP6 and FP7 uh, you really get information. But uh, if, uh, and I'm quite often a, as a referee in Brussels, uh, without the, the information that I found now, um, I really have to say, if one of the old projects, in the same sense, would have been on my table once more, I would have said, well, excellent project, let's fund that. Because you don't get the information, what has been done in the field in the past, and even for the referees, there's nothing available. And this is a pity, because it's a waste of money, and uh, in my opinion, also of time. The information in the system, as I told you, is incomplete in a number of cases. No information about the funding. Sometimes you don't even know the objectives. You, you just have a title and you see there's starch, there's PLA or PHA, but no information what happened in this project. And I think this is a, this is a stupidity. This is public money and I cannot understand why the, uh, why the documentation is, there, uh, is so bad. Um, the uh, pro uh, project information I told you is also very weak and uh, 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 the uh, information as well on the objectives uh, is not controlled obviously. This is just what the coordinator uh, 
gives to Brussels, this is uh, published, but there's nothing else, you cannot look inside, you don't know anything about results, it's just the objectives, so it's, uh, it's a lot of money spent for uh, nonsense in my opinion. In total, we had uh, 64 projects uh, in uh, the frameworks FP2 to FP7 on starch-based plastics, polyhydroxy alkanoates, and PLAs. And the distribution, you can see it's 2020 to 24. So let me say this is an equal di uh, distribution. I cannot see any policy behind that one of these parts gets more money or, or is more interesting or from uh, uh, political reasons than the other ones. I think this is also what I see uh, from my own experience in Brussels. Uh, it's a decision of the referees and not of the policy behind. Uh, if the decision is good or bad, it's a different thing, uh, but uh, it's not a political will behind uh, that I can see. Uh, in, here in seven, uh, you see uh, that for the uh, three fields, uh, starch, uh, PHAs, and PLAs, uh, this is the money that flew inside. Uh, once more, can you show us the table? Uh, yeah. Uh, so you see uh, in, in these uh, three cases from FP6, uh, there's a lot more of money that flew into uh, biopolymers or uh, sustainable <laughs> polymer production uh, projects. Uh, and uh, the, the results for me for starch projects and PHA projects are uh, the same uh, in FP, FP6 and FP7, whilst uh, for PLA, obviously, we have a drop uh, from 17 nearby 18 uh, a million euros down to nine million uh, euros. Uh, that means uh, we have only 50% uh, of the money uh, uh, in FP7 for PLA uh, research that we had uh, uh, in FP6. Uh, for starch, you can see there's a slight increase, a little bit more of money in uh, FP7 than in FP6. Well, for me, if I look at this huge amounts of money that flew into this research, uh, the question is, and was what came out in reality? Well, in the, in the starch uh, field, we know we have production in Europe. PLA, we developed uh, the technologies for the whole world. Uh, part of my technology is now in, in, in Brazil. Uh, it is in China, it is in the States, uh, but nothing happened in Europe. And it's a pity that uh, when I see how much money was spent in that field, and we have no production sites in Europe still. Well, uh, if you go further down, um, well, just uh, for, for one moment here, we had attempts to make PHAs, and I want now to focus just on PHAs because that's my field where I've worked. We had a lot of... Uh, uh, ideas for production in Europe, uh, ICI, Zeneca, if you think back, that was in the uh, 80s and 90s of the last century. But uh, everything uh, what was developed there, and I was working for Zeneca for, I think, three or four years, uh, everything suddenly, without information to the people working in the field, was sold to Monsanto, to the States, and uh, later on showed up uh, in the field of uh, uh, other companies uh, in the United States. Uh, open questions that we have is fermentation technology. This is still uh, incomplete. We, uh, when I look uh, through the literature in a moment, you see uh, discontinuous production of PHAs all around. Well, uh, we have proven uh, in the 90s uh, from the theory that it would bet be better to make it in a continuous way. I will show you some data a little bit later. Uh, this is, has, nothing has been funded, uh, n neither on the, on the national uh, level nor on the international level. I think continuous instead of fetch be fat uh, batch um, production of PHA is the only way to do that for the future. Downstream processes, extraction, solubilization of uh, residual biomass instead of extraction and the purification, well, this costs uh, about the same as the production of uh, the PHAs in the fermenters. No work was funded, nothing is done in that field. And uh, uh, it's a pity 
um, that uh, still chlorinated solvents are used, uh, whilst other solvents uh, are uh, not even taken into account. We tried uh, to, uh, to make uh, some work in that field in Graz using acetone as, an, uh, as a uh, uh, solvent for PHAs. Uh, this is described as a non-solvent in the literature, but when you go up with the temperature to uh, about 100 centigrades, suddenly it's an excellent uh, solvent for PHAs, and in one step you can purify the whole thing, but we got no money to do that in a bigger scale, so that's lab work and uh, lacking information is still there. Increased product quality, here I mean tailor-made PHAs, copolyesters, terpolyesters, blocked uh, polymers. Um, I can see so many projects where people work with PHB. PHB is a very brittle material. Uh, it can be used for certain purposes, but uh, it's very, very restrict restricted. Uh, if you look at copolyesters, uh, they are better. If you take polyesters, you can fine-tune them and you can give them whatever properties you want to give them. And I think this is the future and there uh, we need more research uh, that goes inside. Blocked polymers uh, is a little bit difficult. If you do that uh, in, in a fat batch reactor, you will end up with a mess. But you can, can do that in continuous uh, production and we have shown that recently in our laboratories. Can you go to the next? Page, please. Well, uh, this was a project where I was coordinator. Vapol and some of the uh, people sitting in this room have been partners uh, in that project. We were very happy at the end. We were classified uh, as one of the three best technology projects uh, in the fifth uh, framework. Uh, so uh, what was the, the idea? Use uh, the overproduction of whey uh, in Europe uh, we have a surplus from, of uh, 13 and a half million tons. What you could uh, do with this is uh, produce about 205,000 tons of uh, PHA. In that case, it was uh, PHB HV with 15 uh, percent. Yes. We have two other. Okay. okay. Uh, just the next one. So this was the intention, uh, and of course uh, uh, we had to, uh, to look if it's possible to make these uh, uh, terpolyesters. You see here uh, the results that we had in the feeding, uh, uh, in a fat batch reaction, molecular weight 1.5 thousand uh, million, sorry, uh, uh, polydispersity index 1.1 to 1.2. I think this is uh, quite uh, nice uh, polyester. Just uh, the next one, please. Uh, when you do that, you have to reduce the costs, and uh, uh, you see that uh, all these bars that you his, uh, can see here, we were able to reduce the costs uh, during the fermentation, so we ended up with the next one, um, the, uh, the, uh, the price, production price uh, for, for Waypole with about 2.8 uh, euros per kilogram. Whilst if you looked uh, through the literature, you can see we were far below uh, the others. Well, this was done in 300 liter fermenters, and if you would uh, go up to uh, uh, increase the scale to an industrial plant, uh, the price per kilogram would be uh, around 1 euro to 1 euro 50 per kilogram. So uh, this is about this one dollar per uh, Pound, uh, what you can see uh, from American publications, what uh, should be needed, what in the moment is the price for classical uh, uh, products. Well, this is how we produce our polyesters in the moment. This is a cascade reactor. We have uh, a cascade of reactors here. And uh, this is the results here uh, compared uh, with others. Atlich, uh, this is my group here. Uh, it is a, a, a five uh, continuous uh, reactors in a chain. And you can see we have very short production times, uh, 34 hours only, whilst uh, fat batch reactions normally are in the area of 50 to 70 uh, hours. Uh, if you look at the productivities, uh, uh, just uh, just the, the specific productivities at the end, you see a 0 0.1 grams per gram an hour here for uh, the continuous process. Do and L also a, co uh, uh, a process uh, where you have uh, continuous production. Uh, these are very high 
whilst the other one, 0 0.32 uh, uh, for, for the process in Brazil that I have uh, prepared, uh, we could triple productivity just by uh, mm -hmm. using continuous work. Okay. okay, thanks a lot for your patience.